welcome back to Everyday Faith with Father Jared and myself, and John Holland. Father Jared, it's so good to be here. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's been kind of a, yeah, been getting busy in Lent, as mm -hmm. it always is for a priest, but it's been good. So one of those times to where uh, you still got to keep prayer at the center. So the busyness always keep makes sure that, always helps to make sure that you're keeping prayer at the center, but at the same time, it's just like a lot of other stuff as well. So Absolutely. how's life been going for you? It's been going really good. Um, Lent is going very well so far. High school bowling just ended up with, I coached yeah. high school bowling for Fort Laramie for the high school boys and our season just ended up last week. Nice. It went very well. Um, nice. Like, yeah, things are going really good. Things are Sweet. going really good. So what are we talking about today? It is it is Lent. Um, yes. What we want to talk about is Lent and persevering through Lent. Yes. So Father, what what is the goal of Lent? What What's kind of the purpose of Lent? So obviously Lent is always building up to, well, the crucifixion, but then also the resurrection. So we're building up to the holiest time of the year. So it's called Holy Week. Mm -hmm. Obviously every week is holy and you know, because if it's dedicated to the Lord. But Holy Week has a special place because, you know, we get to experience the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood on Holy Thursday. On Good Friday, we see our Lord, we experience our Lord's suffering and his death for our sins. And then with his resurrection, we see his ultimate triumph over death and sin both. And it's something that then we get to look forward to. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so hard Christmas gets a lot more love because it's easier to understand like sure. a baby in a cradle, but resurrection, right. some guy rises from the dead, like that's not ever happened before. <laughs> right. and, you know, and so and so that just makes it, I think, really hard for us to grasp because something way different has right. taken place. So the goal of Lent is ultimately prepare our hearts for that reality to allow us to endure the suffering that we have here and now, uh, to transform us into saints, but then also to prepare for eternity, which is what resurrect, the resurrection brings us into. So awesome. the ultimate goal of Lent is to enter into both those things, to offer up more of our suffering, but then to also enter into eternity. So Awesome, yeah. awesome. That's fantastic. So <clears throat> people often wonder, what do you do? Like, what are some good things to do during Lent? Sometimes I think people can get bogged down. And it's like, okay, we have to give up this. We have to do that. We have to yeah. do that. What is your, what's your take on Lent? And like, what actually is fruitful? And, um, you know, like, I, I guess for, for each individual, you know, like what's, yes. what's just some, some ballpark stuff. So. Well, and yeah, so it has to be individualized because mm -hmm. obviously some of the, you know, doing some of the great stuff like the fasting sort of thing. So I always try to give up, you know, sweets, mm -hmm. alcohol, except for whenever there's like kind of an occasion. So like sure. this weekend visiting with my cousin, right. Which was a Sunday anyways. Um, so that was okay. Cause I always make those kind of like things to say like in these situations, it's okay. Cause as a priest, sometimes if you say, I'm going to give up meat, well, <laughs> you can't always like impose that upon other people. Right. So right. the law of charity takes precedence there mm -hmm. um, in those cases. But so, you know, like kind of those traditional practices or, you know, giving up social media or spending less time watching TV or whatever it is. But even like personalized. So one of the things I'm doing this Lent, which uh, has been helpful to me so far is I made an agreement that I would make. I would call three old friends a week. Oh, nice. Nice. Because I know that for my own joy and my own happiness to reconnect and like talk, see where people are at always helps to get me like outside of everything that's just right in front of me that can become frustrating, that can consume everything I do. To break out of that and to reconnect with old friends always helps to add a certain level of joy and then also peace to my life because it's like, hey, like I got to see that person Absolutely. again. And so that's one thing that I'm doing this year that is maybe not the standard kind of Lenten practice, yeah. but it's been very helpful for me. So it kind of depends on the person. Like what ultimately, what do you want to achieve? My goal in doing that was to make sure that I'm always, or was to lean into the fact that friendship is something that I really treasure, mm -hmm. but I don't always do a good job about being a good friend. So right. to recommit to being a good friend was just one of my things and say, well, how can I do that? And it's like, well, here's one thing I can do. So it depends on maybe what you want to accomplish throughout Lent. So I would, I would agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we get bogged down. We want to do so much. Right? Yeah. There has to be this foundation though. And Lent, many, many of the things that you want to do is um, maybe instill a solid foundation and, and maybe break some old sure. habits, but ultimately build some good habits yeah. as well. Um, so I, I think that's awesome that you're doing about like the reconnecting with your friends yeah. and stuff like that, because I think you were talking about it this past week that like um, friendships are are extremely important. Yeah. Um, especially people that will like help kind of help you. Yeah. And aid you in your journey. So I think that's fantastic. I would agree with that. Um, some of the things that I'm doing for Lent 
is I'm not as worried this year about like all the penances yeah. and the sacrifices and sufferings. I'm not saying that those things aren't good. Yeah. I mean, they are. Yeah, they are. And they have their place and their purpose. But for, for me, per, kind of like Father Jared was talking about personalized, I want to really work on what do I need? What is going to make me a better Catholic? What is yes. going to make me a better man? So, for example, um, one of the things that I'm doing for Lent is I'm um, instilling, I'm working out more, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, used, oh, yeah. I used to be into physical fitness a lot and like with running and stuff like that. And over the years, I've kind of um, put that to the side, if yeah. that makes any sense. And I, I can feel it like, you know, um, like emotionally and just on a whole, a whole bunch of different levels. So like I'm one of the things I'm working out again, trying to get into better shape <clears throat> and also having a more of a, making sure I have more of a structured prayer sure. life. Um, making sure there's that prayer in the morning. Maybe it, maybe it's a devotional, like su such as the rosary, you know, commit to praying that rosary every single day. Um, evening prayers, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So whatever it is that is going to help you be a better person, help you be a better Catholic. That's some of the things that I'm really focusing yes. on this Lent, um, and hopefully it will go well. So, yes, for sure. So for sure. Well, can you, let me ask you a question, Father. Sometimes people get can get bog, bogged down with Lent as far as like maybe you, maybe you gave something up and maybe you fell off the wagon, if that makes yes. any sense, right? Would you give us any kind of spiritual advice through persevering and like maybe restarting, if that makes any sense? Yes, because I think that's, well, that's just one of the most important things that we always have to remember is, you know, St. Maria always said that a saint is a sinner who keeps trying. Mm -hmm. And one of his favorite phrases I have to repeat to myself all the time because, well, as a priest and with all the different like things you're juggling, you always drop something. Sure. And so it's like, and he had Nuke Chepe, which is like, now I begin. Mm -hmm. Like, so you are so you start again. It's just what you have to do. Like you just have to declare this moment, that's the past. Mm -hmm. Take the lesson that you learned, but then move forward. Because ultimately, regretting like I fell off the wagon does you no good. <laughs> the only thing that, like, the only thing that you have that is a value that you learn that in regret is like what you learned. Like, oh, like here's where I here's where I began to fall off the wagon because oftentimes it doesn't start with like you felt it was like there's something like a thought or something that you decided to let take precedence over that that then pushed it off pushed it off and eventually you didn't do it sure so it's important to learn the lesson but then once you've learned the lesson move on and go to the next thing and stop you know feeling sorry for yourself essentially so absolutely I love yeah. it I I had a con um my confessor once told me something about. Um, it's kind of an analogy, but like, so when you're in the rain, for example, you're talking about yeah. like, you know, when you fall up, not kind of just dwelling in your mistakes sure. and sitting there and kind of staying in that rut. rut. Uh, I, my confessor told me once, he's like, when you're in the rain, what do you do? Do you just kind of sit out there and just kind of bask and like, oh, you know, there's <laughs> rain falling all yeah. over me, you know, this, you know, or do you, do you keep, do you, do you push through and persevere, right? And the obvious answer is like, you know, yeah, you, you, you persevere, yeah. you know, if I'm walking from a to b and it's raining out i don't stop in the middle of you know yeah. kind of the um misfortune and just dwell in that yeah no you pick yourself up and you keep going forward sure exactly all right so i love it i love it that's fantastic <clears throat> so um speaking of jose, jose maria escriba i don't think we shared with our viewers our awesome new mugs that yes. we got yes so do you want to talk a little bit about them father or not yeah well melissa mcdonald who is the religious education uh secretary she found these online and so you know, it's set, so it just has like a cute little like cartoon of <laughs> St. Jose Maria, which I love. So I have like a lot of St. Jose Maria coffee mugs now, which is great. But it says, it's one of his quotes, sanctify yourself and others in your work. So just an emphasis on, yeah. you know, which is the great theme of this show, right? Everyday faith. So right. sanctifying the everyday. So yeah, so just a cool little mug. And I kind of like the, uh, the little button nose <laughs> thing there and the glasses, which are over emphasized. So it's great. It's good stuff. <laughs> oh, good yeah. stuff. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I think, you know, in all, a lot of those Lenten practices too, along with falling off, I think a lot of times my frustration is sometimes it doesn't have quite the same power. Mm -hmm. And I, this is kind of what I preached about yesterday was, you know, sometimes we think that it's going to be the thing that finally fixes us mm -hmm. and just like it never does. And so what is your own experience of just in your own life of those times to where, 
you have a spiritual practice and maybe at first like it has like this great fervor you know like so often that like something new you know like but then like the shine wears off sure and it just becomes part of life and not so much like an exci- exciting part of life anymore yeah. so what, what what's your experience of do you still do you like have you discovered how you still obtain fruit or mm-hmm. grace through that or what's your been your kind of experience of that yeah um <laughs> So I guess <clears throat> probably one of my experiences would be I'll just I'll just use the rosary as an example. Yeah. As a convert to the faith, um, one of the things that was I fell in love with the Blessed Mother um, in the process of awesome. joining RCA and yeah. absolutely fell in love with the rosary and it's, yeah. especially because when you pray the rosary, um, we are literally meditating on the life yes. of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it's this beautiful prayer that um, it's it's just so powerful. It's, yeah. it's so powerful. Now, that being said, sometimes as a, as a young convert, there was all kinds of um, consolations. Sure. And sometimes it was really easy to stay, um, like to pray because of just the inner joy yeah. that comes with it, right? And often the Lord will allow that at first to attract us, yeah. if that makes any sense. <clears throat> So as far as like, you know, you find something that's, you know, I still pray my rosary every yes. day, right? And I don't say that like just to brag or anything, but it's something that's it's very fruitful. Even if I don't feel it, right? Feelings sure. are not necessarily, yeah. um, they can definitely play a big part and can help sure. propel us to do awesome things. But it's that's not the, um, it's not the goal, right? If I just say, for example, if I were to donate to charity, right, and the first time I do it, it feels good, right? It's it's awesome, and there's this self satisfaction. Yeah. Well, that's great. <clears throat> but if I continue to do that, continue to do that, yeah. right? Is there still good for me donating to charity? Absolutely. Even if yeah. I don't feel it. Sure. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. No, that's so. Good. I guess I would say, yeah. Sometimes you know, it's easy to maybe not see the fruits. But perseverance, um, yeah. perseverance ultimately is a it's a winning recipe. If that you know, kind of in a general way well, of no. saying. And it actually, so I mean, and to your point, Saint John of the Cross, Saint Teresa of Avila, Saint Francis of Sales, all talk a lot about whenever you know the Lord removes those consolations that come. Whenever we do, take the proper actions and act and sanctify our everyday lives. Whenever those consolations are removed, and yeah. we're left with like only just His grace enough to do it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the merit actually increases. Oh wow! Because you're not being motivated by feelings, absolutely. And so you're just simply willing, because well, obviously by His grace, it's not just like you know pull yourself. Away. It's but I mean God's grace is only sufficient in that moment, and so you actually merit more because you cooperate with His grace, mm-hmm. despite the fact that you are you're not getting. You're like you have diminishing returns, so sure, to speak. Sure, sure. And so I think it is important for us to remember that that experiencing the darkness, experiencing difficulty, is actually a great opportunity for us to grow in holiness. And it's actually and and it's actually kind of a point at which we should reach in our spiritual journey because then the Lord is working through something in us. And that's what I've always found is the darkness is always like the Lord purging something Mm -hmm. because usually it's pretty painful. And, but then he's ultimately doing some very good work in us. So it's really important for us to always remember that. So absolutely. Yeah. So I think to your point, that's something that's really attested to by the spiritual tradition Mm -hmm. to reinforce experience with all the experience of the saints. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many of them, I would say, the overwhelming majority of them went through some kind of darkness and yes. dryness, you know, and what they did is they kept moving forward. You know, St. Yeah. Teresa of Calcutta, I think she had like 50 years of yeah. like... Um, I think it was only 40 years. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. But these moments where, you know, um, <clears throat> yeah, she, there weren't all these inner constellations, yeah. but she kept moving forward, right? And when yeah. you're running the race, you know, sometimes as a former cross country runner, the best times of the race were the beginning of the race and the end of the race, the middle of the race. Usually, was where there was the most um, the battle. If that yeah. makes any sense. Oh yeah. So learning to, you know, push through those hard spots. And that's actually like you kind of I might say it in a little different way, but in a way to um, increase in virtue yes. because it's it's easy to do something when it's easy. It's it's 
you know, it's not easy to do something when it isn't easy. Yeah. So, you know, picking up that rosary, even if, you know, you're not feeling like it, right? But you're persevering because you know this is what's good for you. You know this yes. is what's best for you. Um, that can just um, increase build yes. up, increase in virtue in us in so many ways. So, yeah, I love it. Perseverance is great. So, Father, do you have any advice, any more advice that you would have for us for a fruitful Lent? Um, we talked a lot about individualized Lent. Yes. And what each person needs in particular, right? It's, it may be yes. different. What you need is not going to be the same that I necessarily need, right? Yes. What somebody else needs may not be the necessarily thing that I wanted, that yes. I need. Sorry, a little tongue-tied. What are just some, again, just some advice that you could give to our viewers about just having a fruitful Lent? I think then also it's good to have some sort of practice that, mm -hmm. that maybe is not just simply incumbent upon you to be responsible for, but I think something like one of the great things about having scheduled times for Stations of the Cross you know, Divine Mercy Chapel, which we'll have at 3.15 today here. And, Ooh, come yeah, pray with us. Yeah, <laughs> this won't be up by then, but, you yeah. know, but, 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 <laughs> but, but, you know, like, so that, so those kind of communal opportunities for prayer, or maybe go, if you don't go to daily Mass ever, yeah. maybe going to daily Mass, because what I think that those kind of experiences of communal prayer is that they're at a set time, so mm -hmm. it isn't like, I'll squeeze it into my schedule, mm -hmm. but instead you instead made yourself beholden to someone else's schedule. And that's a really good thing for us to experience, especially as Americans, because you know there's a reason why all of us have our own cars here, unlike Europe where they have like public transport. <laughs> so I think there is something good in the communal communion aspect of, right. of a Lent, of a fruitful Lent is beyond what we've talked about, individualizing your Lent and obviously individualizing it to where you need to grow in virtue and where you need to be challenged. But also I think somewhere we, where we can always be challenged is to be with the rest of the body of Christ to right. pray with them and to experience Lent with them because I think those are wonderful opportunities for community that are just merely fun or um, kind of service oriented but instead those opportunities to pray with other people outside of even Mass is I think something that can be really really add to a lot a lot to one's Lent so yeah. I would agree with that and that could also <clears throat> on just kind of a um, you never know what kind of seeds that could plant within yes. like just the community in general. And sometimes a small seed um, sprouts into something very, very beautiful. Yes. So I love it. Yeah, taking part and the opportunities that are presented to us, such sure. as Stations of the Cross, um, praying, you know, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy as a parish, yes. whatever it may be, those awesome opportunities, not being afraid sure. to, to jump into those. Well, that's awesome. Well, so we hope that you enjoyed this show yes. um, as we talk about Lent and persevering through Lent. Father, is there any way that you, we could uh, close with a prayer and a blessing? Of course. All right. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-loving Father, we give you thanks for the gift of this Lenten season by which the Church strips of, of some of our worldly and earthly uh, comforts, pleasures, so that we might be stripped of those and then be able to put on the heart of your Son in all that we do and be filled with his Spirit and with his care for each one of us. The Lord be with you. And with your Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you, Father. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Lent. Oh, how true the Spirit guides.